Bernadette Feist, and I came to the Valley in 79. This museum was opened in 2000. Almost a common consensus of people here in the Valley that the village uh, school that was vacated would still have a purpose to serve in the community. That was the idea of, of museum and Valley Native Ministry with Too Good to Be True, which operates two other classrooms here. I am just uh, the chairperson of the museum board. And then this extra room that we're standing in here, this turned into an art room. We tried to maximize the First Nations art. The series here are prints of the months of the year, but uh, explained in the Cree language also and they are compositions of Sanford Fisher from Gordon's First Nations. And we do have a lot of First Nations art pieces from Williams Lake, BC, also from First Nations peoples themselves, from the local areas. We started out as a art room. It just kept growing as with different forms of art, whether it was copper tooling, whether it was other local artists that I could name probably a good dozen of them, or different form pottery, different just burning on buckskin or something like that. Well, this, this display I do enjoy speaking about. A display donated by a priest who had worked here for 20 years with First Nations people. And each of these dolls have a costume or a floral design on them that is particular to one part of Poland. When you That's one common element with, with the First Nations because I know sometimes when I have my moccasins on, they'll say, well, you, some Sioux lady made those for you because they are geometric. Or maybe Maybe that was a Cree design because it's floral. The same principle applies here to different parts of, of Poland. People uh, will drop things off or they'll check to see whether Sister Bernadette is interested in having these things. For instance, this washing machine beside me, this, it was accidentally showed up here because they asked if I could get rid of it somewhere. <laughs> That's how it showed up here. And there's people that drop things off. They're evaluated to whether they'll fit into the interest of the museum. And dentist chairs, a lot of the younger folk will sit in, in there as though they're going to get dental work done. <laughs> The dentist chair belonged to Dr. Riffle. He was a dentist in Regina for many years, but at the age of 73, he decided to retire from dentistry and become a priest. So the chair was donated to us. The, the chair is very popular. The kids like to sit on it, pretend they're getting their teeth worked on, but a lot of them sit on it just to be seen sitting on it and have their picture taken. This display is very particular too, but it dates back to the history of the old Indian hospital in Fort Capel. And many people remember Dr. Symes. This was given by him to his wife as a birthday present, depicting the beadwork of First Nations and Métis of North Battleford area. A very beautiful piece of work. This hallway is an extension of the museum. I like calling it the pictorial part of the museum because that's exactly what it is. It, one highlight of the pictures is one of the first funerals that we had with Métis people, Florence Desjardins. That was back in 2000, where the Red River car carried her remains to the cemetery. Again, it was a part of bringing cultures together. Pictorial on both sides of the hallway, fantastic pictures. The sentence of mind that comes uh, to me is certainly, I think, what describes the Labret Museum. And it's a museum comes alive when the stories are told. And the stories come alive if they're shared by the people. I think the Labret Museum was founded by people who appreciated their history and made it happen. It's toured now by people who have had ancestry here or who have themselves lived here and it's people that are trying to find out about other people that have lived here. Putting that all together, how, how they were formed as a people in the valley, I think that sentence puts every picture in this museum in a living context of relatives and ancestors. Thank you.
If you have program ideas you'd like to see on Max TV Local, let us know at sastel.com slash local.